Have you ever tried to imagine what your life might look like 20 years in the future? I have. And today, I'm going to tell you a story about my investigation into how the world of work and jobs is likely to change over the next 20 years. I'll also share some strategies I've learned that young people can use to adapt to that change. But first, I'd like to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Myra, a teenager. I spend most of my time doing homework. I help out with household chores. I never argue with my sister, never close the door to my room, follow my parents' instructions to the T. You know, all the things you do too. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Let me say this again. I'm Myra, a teenager, and this is how I spend my time for real. <laughs> well, now that you know how I spend my day, let me talk to you about my dreams. You see, my dream job is to be a lawyer. Several months ago, as I started researching on how to become one, the ever helpful Google let me know that most legal processes will be automated. So there went my dream. All right, fine. I can't be a lawyer. What other jobs are there for me? Doctor? No. I heard about these machines that can detect breast cancer more accurately, quickly, and cheaply than current practices. Chef? No. Robotic kitchens that cook with both the skill and flair of a master chef are coming in the near future. Can't compete with that. What about being an Uber driver? Oh, but driverless cars are already a reality. Writer? Once again, no. The Washington Post actually has a bot that wrote updates on the Rio Olympics back in 2016. Wow, my options are getting limited. Now, there is this one job I guess I could take. I have to admit, I never really thought I would be doing this, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. This mysterious job that I'm talking about is, ta-da, pizza delivery. <laughs> the only problem is, there's already drones delivering pizza. So after my first attempt at researching career options, where does all this automation leave me? Basically, unemployed and living in my parents' basement. Now this isn't how I imagined my grown-up years. I expected to be able to have a job that supports a lifestyle, gives me independence and control, and in fact, not just keeps me out of my parents' basement, but also their house. So I spoke to some of my friends. Perhaps they would have a better handle on this. Sadly, I didn't receive a single answer that provided clarity as to how young people today can start preparing for the jobs of tomorrow. All of us were swimming in the same river, just learning to swim faster and get ahead. Unfortunately, we didn't know where this river was leading to. I decided to investigate this further. I wasn't gonna give up easy. One of the first things I realized was that I needed to stop being a fish in the river. Instead, be a bird, flying high in the sky with a wider view of what the world ahead looks like, as well as where the river could take me. Now, what's the best way to learn to fly? Obviously, it's by taking some flight lessons. So I decided to self-school and apply for an internship to get a feel of the real world of work. And the first email I wrote to a company received a response within 24 hours with an exciting offer of a paid internship. Are you kidding me? That totally didn't happen. But just for a moment there, I wanted to see what it would feel like to have so many people be in awe of me. Anyway, what did happen was that about a dozen companies turned me down, saying I was too young and I didn't have the skills required for the job. But there was a silver lining, as one company offered me a position to create content around increasing teenagers' awareness of data science. Data science? That sounded scary. But my curiosity rose as I researched the topic. Terms like artificial intelligence and machine learning did throw me a bit in the beginning, but I soon realized this topic was going to the heart of my issue. Off the bat, I came across some statistics that gave me goosebumps. So far, I was thinking the most significant threats to my future were climate change, air pollution, and politically divisive heads of states around the world. But as I'd already begun to discover, when looking into careers in law and medicine, there is another threat looming. The threat of automation changing the nature of our jobs, careers, and lives on a truly massive scale in the next few years. I was thinking, if we do not know what jobs will look like by the time we enter the workforce, what skills will be required for us to get these jobs? And how do we prepare ourselves if we do not know what these skills will be? When the time comes for me to apply for a full-time job, will companies say the same thing I heard when applying for internships? That I don't have the skills required for the job? So over the last few months, I've been trying to find the answers to these questions. 
I've had the privilege of speaking to some super busy people who make important decisions at the highest level of companies, also known as CEOs. I asked them their mantra for automation proofing our careers, and the most resounding advice I received was simply this. You can't direct the wind, but you can adjust your sails. The business leaders I spoke to referred to this as AQ, the adaptability quotient. And what it means is that you're always pushing yourself to learn something new. Just when you've mastered one skill, something new intrigues or challenges you. Similar to how video games are always throwing challenges at you and keeping you on your toes. You have to be able to figure out what to do if you're just dropped into a situation. So, parents, bring on the Fortnite addictions because it's actually helping teenagers prepare for the future world of work. Just kidding. <laughs> on a more serious note, scientists agree that AQ is not fixed. It can be built. So, let's look at how we can develop this AQ. The first way to do this is by not putting all our eggs in the same basket. Develop many talents and turn some of those into your job, providing the variety and challenge that we teenagers thrive on. This is different than the traditional mindset of entering one field and working there for the long term. We are seeing the emergence of this gig mindset, which is working on one job for a short time and then moving on to another one. I recently attended a TED Talk by someone who has turned many of her passions into money-making ideas. She's a passionate runner, an active health and wellness blogger, a teacher, as well as a motivational speaker. And she's taken an entrepreneurial approach into building these passions into profitable ventures. She has what she calls a passion resume. In the future, it may become increasingly beneficial for us to have four to five gigs at one time that involves simultaneously working for a number of companies or for ourselves rather than for one organization. The second nugget to building our AQ is what I'm calling the early bird always gets the worm. Even when you're still in school, start gaining experience of the real world of work by doing some part-time, full-time, paid, unpaid internships. Explore. These experiences provide a great confidence boost and a sense of independence. Let's take my example. By exposing myself to an internship experience early on, I've built some pretty awesome connections with adults in the professional world. Without the internship, I wouldn't be here today because I wouldn't know anything about the possibility of automation proofing our careers. The third way to building our AQ is instead of eating fish, we need to know how to fish. While it is important to learn what is being taught to you in school, it's also necessary to balance this learning by taking initiative of your own learning. According to responses on a survey I conducted for my internship amongst 50 data scientists to see how they trained for this new and fast-changing field, almost 80% of the respondents said that, said that they had self-studied to gain knowledge about data science. The fourth strategy that I'm proposing is just like how the rain wets the leopard spots but doesn't wash them off, while machines automate certain processes, there is one component, the spots on our coats, that will be hard for them to automate. This component is the human element. Yep, that's right. Unlike machines, humans have an advantage when it comes to being creative, building complex relationships, and handling uncertainty. While machines use data to learn and improve, humans use their lives, experiences, and emotions to learn, improve, and most importantly, to connect with others. An example is a village in South America that was recently built entirely by a 3D printer, eliminating the need for any human builders. Yes, at one level, we lost human jobs. Jobs that were repetitive, routine, and predictable, like laying bricks, screwing in windows or doors, and painting walls. However, this came with a tremendous increase in need of designers, who were able to innovatively design the houses, keeping in mind the unique culture, climate, and needs of the local farming-based community, including a kitchen garden. Now, you may not believe me about the power of building your AQ. That's okay, I probably wouldn't believe some random teenager either. But you might believe a famous scientist. Charles Darwin, famous for publishing his theory of evolution almost 160 years ago. He said, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It's the one that is most adaptable to change. I believe it's important not to view automation and technology as competition or enemies to fight against. Instead, as partners and tools we can use in order to make our lives more meaningful. By increasing our AQ, we can drive technology and not be driven by it. So, having taken this journey, landing an internship, interviewing CEOs, and discovering ways to cultivate one's adaptability quotient, how can I apply all of this back to my original question of what job I'll have when I'm older? Well, I've already started diversifying my skills. 
I've been learning piano for the last five years, so maybe I could teach or compose music? Or I'm a passionate martial artist, so maybe teaching my taekwondo could be my thing. What about being a professional illustrator? Or a photographer? And I still kind of want to be a lawyer. Actually, wait, why do I have to choose? I can be a lawyer by day. In between my appearances in the courtroom, I'll be teaching piano over Zoom, or better yet, through my hologram. In the evenings, as my personal robot will be cranking out the next day's arguments based on years of past data, I'll be teaching Taekwondo. And by night, I'll be a professional illustrator. On the weekends, I do some photography gigs if I feel like it. The world will be a very different place in 5, 10, and 20 years in the future. So I'll continue to refine my career goals over time, to explore and learn and to build my uniquely human skills. I've learned that these strategies, the, bird, the a basket of eggs, the bird with the worm, going to fish, and the leopard spots will help me create career opportunities for myself despite the rising trend of automation. Thank you.